All right, so I'm going to continue. with copying and pasting, and then using the large selection tool to move it. And use the arrow keys. And just like all of our projects so far, your sketch isn't something you have to be slavish to. It's something to help you get started. And now I'm using the blob brush to make these, but then at any time I can use the pencil tool to clean them up. And the pencil tool, I just want to start on the path and end on the path. There's these little connections, which are tough in any kind of inking. Bending around corners, getting straight edges. The pencil tool can help me with that. Closing a circle. But I love the blob brush because it gives me such rational lines. So it's great for line art. So again, that's under the paintbrush tool. It's where the pencil tool is. You can double click it to get your settings. I like to use it with a tablet and with pressure variety. If you want a more animated line, you might not make it pressure sensitive. And then it would always be the exact same line weight. And what's nice, because it's a blob brush and not the regular paintbrush, it's making fill paths, not strokes. And then those fill paths, which have an outside edge and an inside edge that can be individually modified, will always be closed because it's basically outlining around your ink lines. Whereas if you just use the regular brush tool, which I never recommend in Illustrator, it gives you strokes, which only have a central path. And then remember, there's always the smooth tool if you need it as well. So you can get really professional looking inking this way. But it takes some time and patience, for sure. And it reminds you, we've only had one vector assignment. It kind of reminds you the, the control of anchor points and all of the fussy stuff that it requires to, to control something within Illustrator. So why is Adobe Illustrator called Adobe Illustrator? It's not because it's best for every illustration. It's because it can make things look professionally clean. So blob brush, not the paintbrush. And then I can continue with these shapes. And then I can correct them with the pencil tool. I know you're at different stages. Some of you are still tracing line art that you did in a raster program like Photoshop and bringing it into Illustrator to image trace. I can help you from that point to get it set up. But then once you know how you're digitally inking it, you just want to spend some time getting that right. Huh. So sometimes you have to use your eraser tool to break a connection before you can use the, the pencil tool to redraw it. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to break this connection so that I can use the pencil tool to redraw these edges. There we go. And that's because 
I've made this little detail, which is kind of fussy, but it's a little detail of the Alamo College's logo at the top of this hinge of the jaw. So sometimes these proportions and things really matter. But then when I use my blob brush, it's going to bring it all together again. In a way that's nice and clean. The other thing that's helpful for spot illustrations that we're going to digitally color is to have uh, contained shapes. And we'll talk about that more with coloring. But think of it like a coloring book. It's nice when each shape is fully contained because then it's easy to color inside of, to kind of color inside the lines. Makes it easier to select. So I'm going to pause here, answer questions. All right, so I'm continuing to use the blob brush, and then when I need to modify it, I use the pencil tool. But remember, you have to see the anchor points in order to use the pencil tool. And I can use the smooth tool when I need to, but most of the time, having the pencil tool on smooth does the job I want. And I'm trying not to be too perfectionist about it. Because this isn't a logo design, this is just line art for a comic book or line art for a t-shirt. But the beauty of vectors is you really can make them perfect if you take the time. And if I'm working for a client that's paying me by the hour, I might take a lot of time. Okay, very often in inking, you want just a really smooth kind of meditative line. And that's hard for me. I'm more of a sketcher. So you try to do that one even path, but then you end up with edges that are weird. So that's why I need to go back in with the pencil tool. But the blob brush makes it easy because it averages everything together into the same marks. If I get these little bumps, they can be fixed. These little overlaps, they can be easily fixed. And then I have a lot of nice open contained shapes, like a good coloring book, for my digital color to go into eventually. But i got to finish up my inking first. Now what if I want perfect, perfect circles? Because this has come in into play with some of you. I don't need to do this all with the blob brush. I can use my shape tools, just like we do with our logo. I can hold down shift and get a perfect circle. But you see how that's a filled in path. So how can I turn that into line art? It's a cool process. This is how you do it. First, you change it from a fill into a stroke. So I swap these. So now I have a black stroke. Then I go to properties, and properties will show me the stroke size. It's only one point right now. I'm going to make that thick enough to make sense with my inking. So maybe like that. So now, if I click off of it, it looks like I have what I want, but I don't actually have what I want because it's outputted off of a stroke instead of a closed path. So then I have to select it, go to Object, Path, Outline the Stroke. <laughs> so Object, Path, Outline the Stroke. This will save you so many headaches to know this. Once I click that, it turns it in to a fill path with two sides, just like if I did it with the, the blob brush. And with that, I can then do things like size it, distort it a little bit, so it looks like it's in perspective, rotate it a little bit, put it into place. So you can do that by hand as well. I can copy it, I can paste it, just like transforming a vector shape in Photoshop, right? But now I'm doing it with line art. I can put it in, copy it, paste it. I can put it in.
but I'm going to select it so only it is selected, right? And then I'm going to use the eraser to get rid of this side of it. And you see the eraser will not erase anything that's not selected. That's handy. The eraser tool is right here. And you can double click on that and set your parameters and you can use it with your tablet to be pressure sensitive. And then I can copy that and paste that and then shrink it with my large selection tool. And you see how the whole line quality then shrinks. It's pretty nice. And then while it's selected, I can use the eraser tool to erase the part that I don't need. And I get the inset of this little wind-up dial. And then I can copy that, paste that, bring that over. So this is like pretty technical control. One of my early illustration jobs was for Lakeshore Learning Materials, doing kind of their catalog illustrations for, for toys. And this is the kind of finish on the artwork that they wanted, right? Because it would have to be published and put on websites at various sizes and resolutions. Sometimes they would color it, sometimes they wouldn't. That wasn't my department. And I just got paid as a, a freelance artist doing line art for them. That was one of my, my first jobs out of college. So these skills are very, very helpful. And they are painful if you don't have practice with them and you're just trying to figure them out on the job. So this is your opportunity to get exposed to these things. That's why it's a, a first semester requirement for digital, digital imaging, social media marketing, communications. It's a challenging course. There's a lot to it, but these are the, the tools you'll use over and over, over again in these careers. can avoid very costly mistakes by knowing how to use the right formats and when to use vectors, when to use raster, and how to correct things. All right, I think the trickiest parts of the illustration are done. Now it's just more blob brushing. So I think everyone I've helped is in Illustrator now. Whether you live traced it or not, the blob brush is the tool you want to use, not the regular brush. You want to double click it and you want to play with its settings so it can give you exactly what you want. And then I just use the blob brush, the eraser, and the pencil tool and that will give me full control over my line art. And only in specialized circumstances will I do things like the shape tool. And I'll usually use the same line weight for everything. But every once in a while, I might tighten it up. And you want to work general to specific. Don't start with your most nitpicky details. Try to get your big shapes first and then get into the details. I say as I'm doing details. And remember you're guided by your sketch but you're not a, you don't need to be a slave to it. You can make your own little changes. And I just love that smooth function. I wish that was around in the mid-90s. I was doing a lot of newspaper cartoons.